I would say that I'm moderately nervous to film this video um, because my camera is stuck to my music stand magnetically um, like this so I'm not actually too sure how this is going to work out it is wobbling a little bit so we're going to hopefully not break my camera and uh, we're going to be playing some soprano sax again today now I can't read music off the stand because it's right in the way Oh. We're going to rethink this. Hello everyone, I am currently in my bed. Hello everyone, I'm currently in my bedroom. Um, this is about the only place I can play saxophone in my flat without absolutely annihilating the walls and everybody around me. So, um, we are returning today now that I've got my camera set up in a relatively stable position, I think. Um, we're going to play the soprano again. If you watched the last video, you'll know that it was a bit of a disaster. So I bought a Van Doren S15 mouthpiece. Um, and first of all, the corks were the driest thing I've ever seen. So getting the mouthpiece actually on was a bit of a disaster. And then we found that the stock ligature that the saxophone came with did not fit onto this fat little stump of a mouthpiece. So I had to make do with the stock mouthpiece as well. And I'll be honest, it didn't really leave me feeling amazing about the saxophone, but I knew I just had to be patient and it would be a matter of time before I got the gear I needed. So I just received the Van Doren MO in the mail about an hour ago. So I've got it out and I also got myself some new reeds. Um, and these are the Van Doren V12 Soprano reeds. Uh, they are two and a half in strength. It's sort of the weakest reed strength that they recommended with this mouthpiece, so I thought I'd give it a go. It should be quite similar to the Van Doren traditional two and a halfs, which is what I play on anyway, so we're gonna give it a go, and that fits on so nice, so much better than what I was trying to do in the last video. If you didn't see it, it was a, a mess. You don't need to go and watch it. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, actually. It's 20 minutes of me trying to play soprano, so. But here we are. This is also my first time playing on the straight neck. Uh, this is literally the first time I've picked this up since the last video. And it's probably gonna come out a week after that video, but it's actually the next day. I am as in primed the crap out of the ligature and the reeds, so we could get going today. That sounds pretty sharp. So, first thing I noticed, I squeezed big time at the top. Not so good. However, the sound is quite nice. Um, it definitely feels a lot more familiar with this mouthpiece. Um, I feel like a lot of the problems I had last time is that I was very flat on the Trevor James mouthpiece. Whereas on this, it feels a bit sharp. So, I do wonder what's going on there. The difference is noticeable immediately. I don't know about you, that is so much easier to blow on. Um, it's so much easier to control than the Trevor James mouthpiece. And the thing that drives me nuts about this is it's all in the mouthpiece. Maybe there's something with the neck. I don't think there is any tonal quality that's brought about by the straight neck as opposed to the curved one. But it is so much easier to get a sound out of it. It sounds... It definitely sounds a bit less eh, in your in your face, um, which is one of the reasons I went for this mouthpiece. Um, it is it is feeling quite tinny, um, if I'm really being honest. But so there, it's it's almost like I'm playing. my clarinet coming in again. I'm squeezing a little bit too hard on the E. Another thing I think I've noticed is because it's such a tiny mouthpiece and I, I'm not taking credit for this discovery at all. Someone else said it on YouTube. I just can't remember what video it was. But because it's such a small mouthpiece, I'm sort of 
not really biting it far enough down so let me push it a bit further into my mouth and see what happens wow yeah so it was a bit harder to tongue i think because my tongue being sort of exposed to more of the reed was cutting it off right away so when i tongued it was like uh, uh, um, but the notes came out much better so it's a very similar issue to what i had on the tenor saxophone and to a degree on the alto i think i'm sort of going into clarinet mode where you have to have a very very firm embouchure uh, wherever you're playing whether it's high or low obviously a bit more when you're higher up so when I'm dropping down, I'm not relaxing enough, and that's why it's sort of... Because when, when I'm playing an E... So... It's all, it's all in the lips, I think, and I think because it's such a new instrument for me, I maybe need to familiarise myself with it a bit more before I can make those subconscious adjustments. Um, and I think what it is, is I'm not quite sure which squeezes and which pressures lead to which notes coming out. So I think it is just going to be a matter of playing as much as possible and trying to figure that out. What? Did you hear how sharp I was? That didn't even sound like the right note. Oh, this is... <laughs> the notes are coming out, but the intonation is appalling. It's really sharp in one bit, flat the next. And that was me really trying to use my embouchure there to create the pressure rather than my teeth which I think is the issue. However, the difficulty there is my lips are not incredibly strong, so it's sort of a balance. I need to really slacken up with my teeth and use my muscles to sort of create the pressure, because my muscles aren't as strong as my jaw, obviously. So if I bite down when I go up to the B, it's gonna become a C, <laughs> which is like a, a C. Let's play a B now. It sounded like a C to me. That's because I was absolutely squeezing, but let's try and make that a B. It's incredible. Like I couldn't I don't think I could do that on alto, definitely not on tenor. But I could make a B up a semitone just with my lips. That's really interesting actually. So when I get to the top, I need more air going through the horn and a bit less pressure from my jaw on the mouthpiece and the reed. And I think again I noticed my, my lips weren't where I wanted them to be. When I finished playing, I definitely pulled it out of my mouth a little bit, so I wonder if so sort of jacking this up a bit. So what have we learned? What have we learned? I think I've learned immediately that I'm not going to be playing to the standard that I am on alto, for example. Not because I'm terrible, but because it's almost like a new instrument in terms of what I need to do with my mouth. I've had a, a brief break and I think I'm starting to realise that um, I'm treating this like the switch from alto to tenor. So when I picked up the tenor, I could pretty much play all the notes in tune. I just needed to relax a bit. Um, with this, I think it's a different kettle of fish because I'm jumping up a level of difficulty and the amount of pipe that I have to create my notes has drastically reduced. Um, and I need a lot more control with this and with the mouthpiece, which, as you can tell, it's uh, it's the difference between the correct note and the incorrect note, which can completely change 
how a piece of music sounds. So, like yesterday when I was trying to get the, the high D out, and it didn't sound right at all, that's because it, it wasn't a D. So, I think if I'm going to really get to grips with this, I'm going to need to spend some time just blowing long notes, using a tuner, and just figuring out sort of what my lips and what my tongue and what my throat needs to be doing when I'm blowing out a specific note. Um, and I won't subject you to that, but I am curious. So we are on a B flat instrument. Uh, so. Oh. Oh. According to my tuner, that's pretty much bang on. Maybe a little, little bit sharp. Let's go to the bottom. Okay, well that didn't come out as well as I wanted it to. So also a little tiny tiny bit sharp. It's insignificant but it's edging on the sharp side. And then at the top So that's almost a B. It's still coming out as a B flat on the tuner, but it's it's right on the sharp side. Okay, that sounded like absolute crap. However, I've already realized one thing. At the top, it's a less squeeze, more air. So I pushed more air out of my lungs and my abdomen, or I should say with my abdomen, and as I was doing that I tried to release the pressure on the reed and the mouthpiece, and the ticker slowly moved back, and it didn't get right onto the B flat, but it, it did move back. Of course I was doing it for long enough that I ran out of air, but I think it would take quite a while for me to get used to that and maybe my ears would take a bit to adjust and realize this much air, this pressure for this note. So let me just try that again. Pretty much bang on. I mean, I sort of knew what I had did in my memory if I was to go like, it definitely wouldn't come out right, but interesting. So maybe a B. So that's super sharp again, coming out as a C. So by the end that was a B, bang on, but again sounded like absolute ass and very airy, very breathy, but I think that's because I was sort of <laughs> getting to the end. <gasps> Ooh. Dare I try a D? Dare I do it? Okay, so that's coming out in tune-ish when it's coming out, however, I'm running out of air very quickly. That was better, that was much better. Dare I go or... I shouldn't have dared, I shouldn't have dared. And this is gonna sound dog shit for everyone watching, so... We're done with that for now. However, that's very insightful, and if you don't have a tuner like this one, there's your C. There's your soprano sax C. Yeah, if you don't have one of these, I would highly recommend it, because 
If you don't know that you're playing out of tune and you play alone, you're never going to know. It's not the most interesting of things to practice, but having spent two two sessions, I wouldn't even call this a session because I've been pissing about really, but it's taken me like half an hour to realise I'm really badly out of tune and I need to sort of work on that. And after practicing with the tuner, the second B flat, out it came because my brain went, okay, that's what it sounded like. That's what the lips were doing. That's how much air you're pushing through. And it came out. And like I said, probably couldn't do it again now. I'm not gonna try because I feel good about it now. But yes, definitely working on air, embouchure, tone. So yeah, I'm gonna try and do a little improvisation jam. Uh, I'm gonna put it on as a YouTube short because I'm doing sort of the jam journal. Every week I'm sort of working my way through the keys and just trying to do an improvisation. So I think I am gonna do that um, and just really keep keep an eye on things. And I'm gonna try it on soprano and see how we do. Um, I think it's gonna sound absolutely terrible, but we'll give it a go. I don't know if these are insightful or not. I don't know if they're entertaining. I mean, it's entertaining for me, but like with the last video, there were things that I didn't notice while I was playing, but I noticed later on when I was editing the video and I thought, oh, I need to make a note of that. I need to think about that. And it was really important because I picked up on a lot more things. So I don't know if watching me practice and me sounding like shit is, is helpful, but I'm enjoying doing it and I think it's, I think it's useful for me. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna, I like, I love this thing. It doesn't sound the way I want it to sound yet, but that's the process and um, I'm going to keep going with it. I'm going to leave it there. Have a great one guys and um, I'll see you maybe in another video floating around the internet sometime. So yeah, see you later. Bye.